everybody, it's Cindy. It is Sunday, March 25th, and I'm going to do a sit and stitch with me. I'm working on the Blackberry Rabbit. This is called the Honeymakers. Let me see if we can get in close there. There you go. What a beautiful design. And I am working on this piece. Um, I've been working on it here. Let me take this off so you can see what I did so far. I'm getting there. <laughs> I've been working on it. It's a, a, a beautiful and fun piece to stitch on. And I'm really enjoying it. Uh, we've been having some amazing uh, weather here in Tennessee. I hope everybody uh, is okay where they are. I know there's different parts that are getting hit with storms and flooding, especially uh, Nebraska. My heart goes out to the uh, farmers there in that area and the, all the people. I mean, their homes are just underwater, uh, which is really sad. Uh, it will affect... Uh, the meat industry, a lot of the uh, animals and cows and everything were lost. Uh, the farming, I'm sure we're going to see the price of food go up. If I've heard from a couple of people already that the food price, prices have already started to spike. So um, my heart goes out to them because they definitely lost everything they had. I have been having really good spring weather here in Tennessee. And I did work on several of my uh, beds yesterday. So yesterday I was out in the garden and I was digging up, cleaning up the beds. And I did planting yesterday. I am in uh, Tennessee. And our winter is basically over. Um, I doubt very much we will get a frost. Uh, in my area. I typically plant on April 1st, but it's only a week or so away, and it was really spring-like weather, so I got out there and I planted uh, three different lettuces. I planted kale, and I planted two types of Swiss chard, uh, yellow and red, and what else did I plant? Leeks, onions, and in the middle of the garden, I planted uh, marigolds. I do like mixing in a little bit of flowers in the gardens. And marigolds, they tend to keep the bugs and insects away. And uh, that's just what I found. So I did plant those in there. And I was out front, I uh, tilled all of those gardens again, and you could see there's things starting to grow and pop up, so uh, things are starting to sprout a little bit. And next week I will plant, um, you know, my sunflowers and marigolds and things like that out front. I still have uh, two other beds that I need to clean out. second here there we go I'm just making sure I'm in the right hole here and there's one big garden that I'm I moved I'm gonna be moving from one place to another it'll be a little bit smaller um, I'm gonna keep it closer to the other garden and I will show you at some point uh, where I switched that to but I did take some footage of the garden yesterday and what I did in the uh, beds and I'll definitely include that on the end for you so you could take a little look at uh, what I was working on yesterday uh, so the weather has been really nice I gotta say for the past week it's really been spring like weather uh, so to speak and um, doing you know my four to five mile walk I've still been doing that every day uh, so I'm definitely tend to be more outdoors this time of year. I did go 
down to one of our parks. It's about 15 minutes or so from where I lived. It's called iJams. And it's a nature park. And I'll include some pictures of that at the, on the end here so you could see where I was. And it's definitely beautiful down there. And this is along uh, one of the rivers uh, where I live. And along that in the park, they have like a boardwalk along the rocks and, you know, over the river. And when I was walking on that, you know, it goes around the whole area. And I came to this one area. Give me one second here. This one area where the boardwalk was, there was like a um, a wood piece up, but I went under it. And of course I kept walking, you know, because it goes back to the beginning of the park. And it got to a point where Due to all the rain that we've had over the winter and really past month, we had so we had so much rain. And there was a landslide and it took out a whole big part of the boardwalk. So you couldn't really get to the other side, although you know, I climbed up the mountain and went around it anyway, which I wasn't supposed to do. And I don't know why I didn't take pictures, but I usually always do, but I was just um, paying attention to what I was doing there at the time because uh, definitely it could have been a bad situation if any of the land had given out or anything like that, but completely closed off and damaged the whole area. And it, when you got to the other side, they had a big sign, you know, closed off rebuilding the walk, but they didn't have that on the other side, so I didn't know. But amazing that it took out a whole big piece. And that'll take them a long, long time to rebuild. That much I do know. And it's kind of sad to see all of the land, you know, gone and down in the water. So different parts of the country are really being um, <clears throat> bombarded with all these storms. And there's, it's not just in our country, it's in several countries there is a, a youtube channel called the two preachers and every couple of days or every week they always put out a recap of what's going on around the world and i'm telling you the whole world is getting bombarded with floods and earthquakes and when you see it all compiled into just one one day of what's going on, uh, it's pretty amazing to me. All uh, the damage going on, going on around the world uh, in all different areas. Um, I always tell people, you know, be awake, be alert, you know, know what's going on. Um, there was a, a ship, and it was just the other day. There was a ship that was, you know, out on a cruise and they hit, I don't know if they hit anything, but it was sinking. The, the ship was literally sinking and they had to, I'm sorry about that. They had to evacuate everybody on the ship one by one with helicopters they had to put a strap around each person and bring them over to the to the land, you know, and do it one by one. There was thirteen hundred people on that boat, and they couldn't use the lifeboats on the boat because they said it was extremely windy. So here they show the footage of people, you know, hanging in the strap, being flown by a helicopter to safety on the land. And they had five helicopters doing it, and then eventually two had to leave because they had to go to another rescue somewhere else. I can't imagine being on the boat. They showed footage of the boat of things just toppling. It kind of reminded me of the Titanic. I'm like, this. 
kind of uh, crazy there. Um, I don't like cruises myself. Uh, I went on one and I, it just wasn't for me. It's too confining. The boat's too small. And I was on a big boat, but I saw that whole boat in a short period of time. And to me, it was like, okay, what else do I do? You could eat all day on a boat, that's for sure. But um, just be aware of what's going around you. And um, we just live in some crazy times for sure. It's nothing... Nothing's stable. Uh, things get crazier every day out there. Uh, just, just the times we live in. It's just, uh, I do my stitching and my gardening. That keeps me grounded and focused on the better things in life. If you binge watched everything that's going wrong, you would go out of your mind, I'm sure. It's just too much to take in all the craziness going around I walk my neighborhood like I said I walk four to five miles a day every day and um in my neighborhood there's no one ever out you never see kids outside ever I've lived here um two and a half years and I walk it all the time I never see anybody I don't nobody <laughs> it's, it's, it's amazing it's like I have the whole neighborhood to my self no one is ever outside but yesterday was Saturday and I was walking and I actually saw one lady gardening. So I stopped and I, I was talking to her for like 10 minutes. I never seen her. I was telling her I never see anybody out. We were just talking about her garden, what she was planting and stuff like that. So that was good to see another person just outside. It just amazes me that no one is ever out anymore. I mean, I seriously walk four to five miles in my home neighborhood. I never see anybody. It's kind of, when you think about that, that's kind of, <laughs> that's kind of crazy. <laughs> well, you just don't ever see anybody. Now, a couple of people did ask me uh, what kind of frame and lap stand. The lap stand is an Elon lap stand and both the lap stand and the frames I buy at Artisan Designs. They're online. It's a company uh, in the U.S. They're handmade. They're well-made. I mean, I, I love these frames. I have so many different sizes of the uh, frames. Uh, but a couple of people did ask me where I... Got it. Let me see if I could bring it over so you could see. One second there. Let's see if I could bring this over. See, it says Elon. And it does say Artisan, but it's, it's Artisan Designs. And they do have a patent on it. Um, solid wood, handmade amazing quality so if you're looking for a lap stand or some really good frames uh, this is what I use and this is what I like and there's so many out there everybody likes different things that they like to use and I was telling my sister when I was gardening how Blue, the sky was just, you know, it was just really for the last week it's been pretty clear and blue. And I, I'm always looking up at the sky and, you know, noticing what's what's going on up there. And um, I was telling her that the last week or so there's been no geoengineering in the sky. And, and if you don't know what geoengineering is, you could just Google it and look it up. And after I was done working on the garden, <laughs> uh, I looked up and they started geoengineering and spraying the sky and stuff. And I'm very alert to what they do and what's going on around. And it was a whole week that they didn't, though, and that's pretty unusual. And I'll include, include a picture at the end. You'll see what I was talking about. But if you don't know what it is, I'm sure most people do. If you're looking up at the sky, you see things going on up there. Uh, 
take a look. But the weather, like I said, it's been really nice, really super blue, blue skies and very, very nice out. Spring weather, listen, we're into the spring weather, which I love. It's a great season. I, I just really enjoy spring and summer and it's light to like eight o'clock at night. Absolutely love and enjoy that. Always a great time. Now I've been watching a lot of um, caught up on all of my plus suits. I'll tell you some of the some of the notifications don't come through, and I know I do miss some videos because of that. I don't know what YouTube is doing, but sometimes you just don't get your notifications, and sometimes. Like if I haven't seen somebody in a while, I'll go back and check and see if they have put out a video. And I find they did. I'm like, I don't understand. I didn't get a notification. And I am on auto notify, so I don't know. Listen, YouTube, they do what they want sometimes. But I was watching a lot of videos and what people had purchased from Market, uh, which I just did mine last week. And they had so many amazing patterns this past market that we all really enjoyed. I mean, there's so much more I could have bought, but I didn't. So some a lot of people were showing, and I had seen the pattern. It is a beautiful pattern. Uh, it's called the Quilting Bee. And they said that was the uh, the most popular pattern, I think, at market this year. And i seen it. It is a beautiful bee, but I know everybody is going to be, everybody, I think, got that pattern. <laughs> Maybe I could trade with someone down the, down the line and, and do it. Uh, this pattern really caught my eye, though, and uh, I'm really glad I chose this one. This one's really, really very pretty. All the bee lovers out there <laughs> definitely i stitch this i think of certain people they love their bees and they you know have beehives and grow bee hives and they all got all that good stuff going on in their yards but amazing patterns this year is really hard to choose and narrow it down of what what you wanted to get but i'm happy with what i chose and i'm working on it i finished one of them already and i'm doing this one. This one will be done. A couple of days I'll be done with this one and uh, I can move on to other pieces. If you had a favorite pattern of the market, leave it below. I love to know what everybody really liked at market and it's really, it was really hard to pick one though. I gotta say there was just so many really good patterns. I know the um, the Blackbird books were really uh, popular and they came out with two of them. Give me one moment. I just had to get something to drink there. I was a little bit thirsty. But anyway, market was a lot of fun this year and it's, I think Floss 2 played a huge part and how well market went for so many of the designers this year. And a couple of designers even said that. It, I think it's pretty amazing, uh, this community. We really do is support each other, and I think that's, that's important. It was amazing to see some of the new designers at market and, um, you know, what they thought about market and, how exciting for them. It was their first market to go and do everything. So it's exciting. It's exciting to see for this community. Market's always a fun time. Now I know Stitch Mania is going to be coming up soon and people are starting to think about that. I don't participate in Stitch Mania. It's just not something I personally would want to do. I would be so stressed out. And I have enough to work on. 
I like just working on whatever I want to work on whenever I want. I, I can't follow plans and stuff like that. I, that would that would take the fun out of it for me. And that's that's just me. Everybody's different. I love seeing what everybody else works on though. Uh, that it's fun to see what people come up with on their uh, projects and stuff. So, and I'm gonna stop at this point. I hope everybody has an awesome Sunday. I'm going to take this off so you can get another look at this. And I'll bring it in a little bit closer. Okay, so I took it off and now you can see closer what it looks like. And I'm going to go in, see if I could get those wings. This is, here you go. This is a metallic thread here. It's like a brown metallic thread. Happy sunny Sunday, everyone. Happy stitching. Hi, everybody. It's Cindy. It is March 23rd. It is a beautiful spring day here, and I cleaned out this garden. I actually planted today. I usually wait to April 1st, but it's my daughter's 29th birthday today. Happy birthday, Amanda. She's in Japan, and I figured I'd do it today because we've been having some awesome spring weather and we're really not going to get any more frost or anything like that in Tennessee. I planted Spanish onion, leeks, kale, yellow and red Swiss chard, three different kinds of lettuces, and I planted marigolds in the middle. And I do want to show you, it is a beautiful blue sky today. Uh, for the last week, it's been extremely blue and warm and no spring in the skies today, no tic-tac-toe in the air. <laughs> so it's always nice when I could see a little blue sky, which is pretty rare these days. This is the herb garden, and I do have my lemon balm coming up, my peppermint, oregano. And this is, look, I'm going to bring it in close for this. It's really sunny. This is my garlic. I planted garlic this year for the first time and it's pretty big already. So I'm super excited from that. I planted more cilantro today. I got the sage over there. I trimmed back the um, rosemary all the way down. So we'll see if it comes back. But I did plant another rosemary bush in the front yard uh, last year. So I'm gonna take you around to the front cause I cleaned out that garden too. Now I'm back by my garage, it's super sunny out right now, and as you can see the beds are all ready to be planted, and you can see some of, some of the plants are starting to come up. I'll bring you in closer. You can see a little bit coming up there. That's definitely coming up. And over here, I don't even know if you can see it. It's the bleeding heart plant, and it looks like that's starting to come up. That's starting to come up over there. Now around the front here, I got my bunny and I got my cardinal. He's busy right now, it's windy. And these did bloom. These are super pretty. Let me see if I can get in close. Some super little purple flowers. And I planted those last year, so they came back really nice. I'm really happy with that. And as you can see, I'll pan around. It's pretty empty in there. A couple more months out of the old budding and I'm excited for that. And I'll bring you over to the other side. And these are my rose bushes. I mean, that one's always big. I cut this back a lot too. It's still growing like a weed. So they'll be blooming soon. They're looking pretty healthy. These are all rosemary, but um, rose bushes. And now I didn't plant any of them. These are from the previous owner. And if we go in, um, I do have a butterfly bush I planted there last year. We'll see how that comes up. There's the rosemary plant. It did get a lot. It's probably twice the size of when I planted it last year. I do love rosemary. Rosemary is just a great herb and hey, good greenery. Listen, no, no, nothing bad there. Now this is my purple rose of Sharon. It's starting to get buds. I'm hoping that comes back well. I planted that last year. We got some others. There's another rose bush. So we'll see what comes back. I'm always... <laughs> I always wonder what's coming back. Listen, I'm no professional gardener by any means, but it's a game. You, you plant and see if it comes back. I did plant a lot of perennials, so we'll see. And give me one moment. All right, so that's the update of what gardens I've been working on so far. 
I know some of you are getting some still terrible winter weather in Nebraska. My heart goes out to you. Those people, their houses are underwater, and um, I pray for everybody to just get through this. It's that's They're losing everything, and that's a, a really hard place to be in. Be safe, everyone. Happy stitching.